Ladies and gentlemen, few things in this world are truly perfect. The only exception might be me staring at the camera at the beginning of every video. But today I will show you a perfect chess game. It's not sarcasm. It's not one of my low elo games. This was a game played yesterday between Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura and Sam Sevian at the American Cup in St. Louis. Hikaru played a perfect game of chess. And I will be sharing it with you because it's actually fascinating how all of us have our battles at whatever elo we are. You might be 800, 1600, 200, 2500. And I battle all the same uh, kinds of things just against a slightly different elo. And Hikaru just made it look so easy. He just made it look so incredibly easy. And I had to share it with all of you. This was a 90 minute game of chess. This was not Hikaru playing Title Tuesday or Bullet. This was a 90 minute game of chess. And I would like to show it to you. So let's watch. Give me about 15, 20 minutes of your time and witness perfection. He did not make a single mistake. He did not make a single inaccuracy. Let's jump in. Hikaru started the game with the move e4. Savion responded e5. Now, already I would just like to say something. At this level of chess, 2700, if you are playing a knockout format or you are playing any sort of event where a must-win situation with black does not exist, there's like a 70% chance they're going to play e5 because it's keeping symmetry is considered meta. Hikaru plays knight f3, knight c6, and he plays the Ruy Lopez, a.k.a. the Spanish. There is uh, a lot of territory that they can trek over to now. Sevian might play a Berlin, or he will play the main line, or he will play a sideline. He plays a6. This is called Morphe's defense, but that's only information that you have to know if you want to win your local trivia night, if for some reason there is a chess question. Now, bishop back to a4, knight f6, and now Hikaru takes the first step, the first gander off the beaten path. And rather than playing the main line castles, which could lead to an open Spanish with the move knight takes e4, uh, and then black might play, uh, sorry, white might play d4, and then black likes to play b5, d5. This is something that I think Sevian has played quite a bit of. Uh, rather than entering into any of that or any of the other closed lines, Hikaru plays d3. Now, this is already a pretty big committal decision because normally in the Spanish, white wants to go c3 and then play d4 in one go. Uh, white will play c3, h3, and then d4. So the move d3, it's, I mean, it's not like, again, th this is how you know how, how, how nerdy chess players are. If you move a pawn one square in f instead of two squares, chess players all go, <gasps> wow, that's fa Hey, come look at this. He played d3. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Wow. Right. And then that's essentially what chess is like at the meta level. And now Sam has a decision to make. He can play b5, kicking the bishop back, and then developing more naturally with the bishop to c5. Or he can block in his bishop with the move d6. And he chooses that. So Hikaru has chosen the second most popular option. Sevian has chosen the, most po the second most popular option. And now the players are still in a territory where there are thousands of games. But Hikaru officially takes us into very, very uh, unfamiliar waters. And he plays a move that generally never happens in the Spanish. I think the players of the past would have vomited and peed themselves if this move at the same time, by the way, uh, if this move had been played. Hikaru plays the move C4. This is uh, again like this is when 2750 Elo chess might resemble 750 Elo chess. What? The entire meta of the Spanish, as I thought we knew it, was to play C3 and then D4, right? and then bring the bishop back. So now we're letting a guy go d3, fine, but you're still gonna go here and then do this, right? Or maybe you're gonna play here. c4, well, let me explain it to you, okay? So it's a very rare move. Uh, and the idea is as follows. Number one, b5 is never a thing now. So this bishop will keep pressuring the knight, which therefore destabilizes the center. What is the drawback of this move? d4 is weak. Okay, so you are now, like, if you can still play d4 at some point in the future, probably your opening is a, is a success. You clamp down on some of these squares, but you severely potentially weaken the d4 square. Uh, but overall, I mean, it, it's just a decision. I mean, it's just a very unique way to play. Now, uh, Magnus has played the move c4. A lot of Grandmasters have played the move c4, but it's not the most popular option. 
And uh, black normally will play g6. This is considered the main way to play here. White might play h3, preventing black from developing the bishop. Uh, bishop g7, knight c3, black might castle, white might play knight d5, trying to take advantage of that square. That is essentially what happens here. The move, the move g6. Uh, the main line, I believe, is even putting the knight directly in the center. This has been played the most amount of times. Black will go here, etc. Sam now plays, so what have we got? We got the second most popular move in that position. We got the second most popular move in that position. We have the third most popular move in that position. We have the third most popular move in that position. So we're, we're deep in the woods now, right? Um, now, here's a fun fact about this position, and I have no idea if this was what Hikaru was inspired by. A person by the name of Niklas Huschenbeth played this way with White in 2017. Huschenbeth was on Hikaru's team when Hikaru played the Candidates Tournament, the most important tournament of his uh, recent adult life, in 2022. So, a Grandmaster who's on the team of Hikaru helping him prepare has played this opening in the past. Could Hikaru have been inspired by Nicholas's annotations and his files? Maybe. And that's the beautiful thing about chess. It's not like basketball. You don't have all the players on the, uh, of the team on the court at the same time. It's not like Hushin Beth is sitting right here like, yo, play that move. It's that, it's, it's, it's all the analysis you do. It's all the prep work that you do before you go sit down. These guys know so much about chess. These guys know more about chess than if I live three lifetimes, I might not learn as much as they've already forgotten or not even used. Uh, so the move Bishop G4 is extremely committal. And it's committal because white's going to go here and black really shouldn't go back. You know why? Because at some point, white will do something like this. And black's bishop is actually just dead. Like, it will never participate in the game because white's center is so solid. And black doesn't have the mechanics in place to make this move happen. So, you have to take. Now, what has happened in that trade? Okay? Bishop for knight exchange occurs, that d4 square is now completely weak. If black could get a knight there, black would be super, super happy. However, black cannot get a knight there because black is pinned. So, rather than develop in castle, black goes knight d7. Blocking this and setting up the move knight d4. Now Hikaru plays bishop e3. You will notice Hikaru has not spent any time. That is because he is still in his preparation. Bishop e7 played, Hikaru plays knight c3, notice Sam is down 15 minutes, he, this is not his preparation. And you may ask yourself, why did Sam not play the move knight to d4? I have a feeling it has to do with the transformation. So, something like this, and this knight is gonna be better than that bishop. It can go here, maybe the queen will drop back and white will get more center space. This is all probably something Hikaru has had in his notes. So Sam went here. And then in this position, Sam played the move knight f8. This has occurred in one game ever. And the idea of knight f8 is to go here and here. That is the point. Now, in this position, uh, Hikaru plays knight e2. You will notice Hikaru spent eight minutes on that move, which is either a really genius bluff, pretending like he's on his own, or he actually had to think about the position. And knight e2 simply fights back against the move knight d4. But you know what else it does? It enables the move d4. I said a while ago that if white is able to pull off the move d4, it's going to be the greatest heist in history because he gets to play two light squared pawn moves, create a gaping hole on d4, and still get rid of it. And he's able to get rid of it because of the mechanics of the position. Again, if, if you waited even one move, castle, castle, and then you didn't take the knight, you went like here. Oh, black is chilling. Bing chilling, by the way. Like he is... But knight d4 and life is good, okay? Just knight d4, he's vibing. So, d4, take, 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 black castles. And now, you would think bishop pair is good, right? Don't trade the bishop for a knight unless you have a good reason. The good reason is that if you go here, the knight will now move and that bishop has nothing. So he takes. Now we have this. Queen, rooks, bishop, seven pawns. Who is better and why? White is better. Why? White has a better pawn structure and a little bit more space and active pieces. And that's it. That is all you need at this level. That's why it's 0 0.6, 0 0.7 advantage. White has a bit more space, a bit more activity, and long-term targets. 
White structure is just bulletproof. Now, this move is the only move of the game where Stockfish kind of, kind of complained. It, it, it was a microscope, and I think if you let it run to like depth 35, it's gonna think that both these moves were good. Hikaru in this position, rather than castling short and allowing black to play c5, that's the key move. If black can play c5 and, and not uh, allow white pawns ever to go forward, he's gonna equalize. So Hikaru needs to stop c5. He has two ways of doing that. He can put a rook on d1 so that c5 can be met with bishop takes. And he can also castle long. To a human, castling long is not the most natural of moves. The computer thinks it's microscopically better than playing rook d1. Hikaru kept his options open and castled short side. All right, he only spent three minutes on this move because long castles is just a bit ridiculous. Now the move c5 is not possible because bishop takes. And if the queen tries to sidestep, it, I mean, queen g3, I might mate you. I might force you to do this, which is... The bishop just looks like a lava lamp on e7. I mean, it's not doing anything. Uh, well, it's shining, but that's, you know, it's immo uh, immobile. So rook e8 played, and uh, Hikaru castles. And in this position, Sevian is going to live a very, very boring life because he bought a house 25% below market value on the outskirts of town, and he doesn't have a car, and the closest thing in walking distance is 40 minutes. Uh, welcome to certain corners of New York. Uh, he can't do anything in this position. Like, if he goes here, that's not even a threat. Like, Hikaru will play b3, rook e1, and just start marching forward, and at some point when he marches forward, c6 will be weak. So Sevian in this position is forced to play this kind of ugly move, bishop f6. The point of bishop f6 is that Sam doesn't mind damaging to his structure because probably he will be able to draw the rook endgame. But Hikaru knew that he was on course to play a perfect game of chess and make it into a Gotham video and his own. I'm gonna recap it, right? So the second that the bishop removed the layer of defense from c5, Hikaru went here. Once again, the perfect move. That move does not rush into exchange, and I told you a long time ago, White has targets. D6 is a target. The queen is a target. And by leaving that pawn fixated on the C6 square, that is a weakness. And so is all of this. Sevian now plays rook E6. He's still defending to the best of his ability. Now the best move is to take. How is that possible? How is the best move to take and allow your queen to get hit? A lot of people wouldn't do that because queen C3. And you build behind your pawn. And you build behind this and that. And that, and that. So if black plays h6 in this position, e5 smashes through, rook e6, cd, cd, queen c6. And I'm in. I'm in there like swimwear, all right? Like, I'm get. I'm. we're taking everything. So rook e6 takes queen f6, and now queen f6 correctly exchanging. Even though your queen was the one that was supposed to do the damage, why did Hikaru trade? Because if the rook takes its eye off the e pawn, the rest of the game is super simple. Hikaru's gonna play f3, then he's gonna bring his king, then he's gonna bring his rooks, and this structure is losing. What? This is chess at the 2770 ELO level. The structure of your pawns, which was determined by the opening that you had memorized indicates whether or not your chances of survival exist. Do what? So Sevian was like, well, I can take with the rook or the g pawn. He makes it an inaccuracy, he takes with the g pawn. He does that so maybe he can do this and allow the rook to get in, maybe rook e5 and f5. Hikaru plays f3, Sam attacks his pawn, Hikaru defends his pawn, and now is ready to double up. Do you notice how there is a tripled pawn possibility here? Yeah, rook c2, and Hikaru's knocking on the door. I am the one who knocks. C takes d6, knocks, N-A-K-S, by the way, I am the one who knocks. Oh, that's genius, I'm stealing that. C, D, rook c6, as well as pawn to b3. Savion's got no pawn mobility. He just can't move anything, so he does this. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the ugliest pawn structure of all time.
I am not one to judge. I don't care how humans look, okay? I'm not, I'm, I'm not the handsomest guy myself. I do care how a pawn structure looks, and I 100% will judge you, okay? Like those gossip magazines. We have tripled isolated pawns, two loners, and doubled ice. What even is that? What even is that? What? And the rest of the game, all I will say is, in the rest of this game, Hikaru imitates Pac-Man. Rook d7. Wah, 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 takes the pawn. Sam tries to create counterplay. Hikaru brings his king. Everything is defended. Counterplay is literally impossible, as Sam's rooks have to stand there and just guard everything. Hikaru brings the king. Sam brings the king. Hikaru plays rook a7. Sam gives a check. Hikaru walks out to f4. Sam defends everything. What's going to happen is, Hikaru's not going to rush to take anything. He is going to take away all of Sam's resources in the position, and then he will make his move. He is going to take maximum value away from Sam, who is completely unable to defend himself. Rook a8 cuts the back rank. Sam plays h6. Another pawn bites the dust. And now, what is the domino that is going to start the entire collapse of the black position? There it is. Black's position is hopeless. He cannot move a single pawn. He tries. He goes here. A5. Now the rook has to make a decision which way it goes. It sidesteps rook b8. And that, I mean, you, you, are, you are just out of time, to quote the weekend. King h7. Now the king comes back. King comes back. G4. Taking away the last pawn move. Rook c6. And rook to d2. Ladies and gentlemen, the game is over because black has no moves. Rook goes back, rook b6 takes away the space, and Hikaru just takes the rook. It does not matter that the pawns are now connected because my king will block them. I take a6, I go for your other pawns, I push my pawn, a7, rook a3, rook b7, you create a little bit of counterplay. And in this position, Savion resigned. He resigned because he can't make a damn move. If Sam Savion plays d3, Hikaru will play e6. He can also, just to show you how ridiculous this position is, black cannot take his eyes off this pawn. He cannot push the pawn. He can also not push the king. He can't go to the back rank because rook c8 check. He can't move that way because I take the pawn. And he can't go f6 because I take the king. Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura played a perfect game of chess. The only mistake that Sam made in this game might have been playing the move bishop g4. Like, Sam's opening was complete, completely fine. Maybe the entire setup of bishop g4 just does not work that well, which is crazy. Maybe Sam's inaccuracy was knight f8. In this position, black has played castles in the past, knight d4 in the past. Sam literally made a move in the opening that had been played before. And Hikaru blew him off the board. An absolute positional masterclass, negating every single one of Black's pieces, and essentially taking their soul. Well done. I... What more can you say? This was not an animal viciously tackling another one to the ground in the middle of the savannah. This was a snake wrapping itself slowly around its opponent, preventing it from getting any oxygen. I, this was unbelievable. Unbelievable game. A deserving win. And isn't it just incredible, the levels of chess that exist out there? Like, you're out there in the dumps, beating up the folks of your own elo. I'm out here playing stupid gambits and crazy aggressive lines against 2700s and blitz. Hikaru sits down for a 2700 FIDE rated game, 90 minute game, and it, 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 it just looked so simple. Incredible stuff. 
<coughs> Get out of here.